pizza, pizza, cheese, pizza. Hmm. I wonder if walnut sauce would taste good on a pizza. Hmm. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you. So, how are you? Well, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, oh me? Uh, well, I had a nightmare dream, but then I sprinkled some urine on it and I felt much better after that. However, I'm still afraid of breakfast. So, uh, there are three big exciting news items I would like to share with you this week. Okay, so, number one, my job has ended. My last day was Thursday, and I was so happy. so relieved that, you know, the, the, the boss hole I mentioned before, he, uh, he was, he's been totally quiet. He left me alone. He didn't say a word to me. And maybe he knows he's in trouble, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I hope that, uh, the company will, will, um, uh, will improve if, especially, you know, if, uh, if, if this guy gets canned somehow eventually. We shall see, but I'm not going to be there to see it, I suppose. Um, technically, I'm still, you know, employed, but I'm taking the rest of my time off as PTO, okay? So, uh, number two, uh, something unpredictable happened this week. Just mind-blowingly unpredictable, okay? Now, what happened was I read an article on businessinsider.com, and after I read it, I realized that I have a new respect for the Star Wars prequels. I'll, I'll link to the it below, and I'll, I'm going to show you in a, in a bit. So, yeah, after all the my all these videos where I have bashed the prequels, now I kind of see that they're, maybe they're not so bad. Sure, the execution is still terrible, and the acting is still cringeworthy, but I think they do show George Lucas had a, a bit of genius, prophetic genius even. I, I used to think that the premise was all wrong, but it, it all makes sense to me now. I mean, just think about it. Okay, Palpatine starts a phony war in order to ruin people's lives and remove their freedoms. Okay? Makes kind of sense now, actually. And think about it. He, funds, he funded and armed radicals backed by crony capitalists and global mega banks to attack his nation with mindless drones in order to draw power and support from the ignorant masses until they were willing to give up their freedoms for their own safety. And in return, these terrorist entities funded his election campaigns. Maybe, I don't know, the Palpatine Foundation, perhaps. Let's just, just, let's just call it that. I don't know. So and then his supporters make their goal in life to tell people how to think, what to say, and how to act. And it's just this incredible pressure on everybody to be to be silent and not be themselves. Okay. However, I do think that there is one chapter that would make it much better. Okay. Uh, you know, just a, a, an extra chapter to the prequels, or maybe like half of a movie somewhere. So I, I think that there should be a part in the story in which a Jedi named I don't know, let's just call him Oolong Chris Steven Zobi is dispatched to some planet. Uh, let's just call it Bengazuin, where he uncovers Palpatine's plans for arming and aiding the enemy army. And he and the three others with him intend to blow the whistle on what's happening in the Republic. But then Palpatine leaks information to the enemies on Bengazuin that uh, he's secretly backing. And then when the Benghazi embassy is attacked, their calls for military aid are ignored repeatedly, and unfortunately, uh, Jedi Chris, uh, I'm sorry, Oolong Chris Steven Zobi, and the three others die, and their secrets go to their grave with them. That would make the prequels much, much better. So, it'd be pretty powerful. And let's just make it even worse. Uh, let's just add, like, a part in which uh, Palpatine and Darth Podestius, uh, you know, his, his sidekick, um, they get caught up in some sort of, like, a, a child sex trafficking scandal. 
uh, when his galactical uh, galactic email account gets leaked by some Jedi named uh, uh, Obi Wan Julian Assange. So yeah, this is the article I'm telling you about. Look at this. This is so stupid. All right, Star Wars Rogue One. Writers subtly protest Trump with a rebellion safety pin logo. Oh, how bold. How bold. That is so bold. Okay, in the wake of the week's uh, U.S. election, uh, the symbols of Star Wars Rebellion, blah, blah, blah. Oh, please note that the Empire is a white supremacist organization. Well, he's got some blue horned asshole standing next to uh, uh, Darth Palpatine or whatever, Sidious. I, 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 whatever. Um... Opposed by a multicultural group, led by brave women. Oh my gosh. And Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, retweeted, Star Wars against hate tweet. Hey, guess what, assholes? That's one way to get people to not bother going to see your movie. I was on the fence about seeing this movie um, and having these uh, stuck-up buttholes preaching at me makes me even less interested in seeing this movie. So, okay, you want to politicize the Star Wars movies? Well, I can do that too, and I just did, okay? So, look at what is happening in America, all right? You, you got these, these, these whiny douche copters who think that, that Trump is such a, a bad person and a bully. So, the way that they express this is by vandalizing, causing fights, and setting fires. Yeah. Nothing says justice and righteousness are on your side than overturning police cars, dragging people out of their cars, and savagely pummeling them across the nation, and, you know, burning the American flag. That means that you have justice and uh, everything on your side, obviously. I mean, why wouldn't you? That's, of course. So, you know... Okay, so these ju these social justice warriors, they do not even realize that their immature behavior is the reason why people are, are, were driven to the polls to reject their infantile behavior. I, I, I watched one video, uh, they were saying, oh, this, this is election fraud, because this guy, like, he can push all of the buttons, like, you know, um, uh, Jill Stein, who, who's kind of cool, I liked her, I guess. She, she had some good points, I suppose. Um, of course, uh, Hillary... And then the Trump button wouldn't work, and they were saying uh, they were you know, somebody tweeted this, and they're like, "Oh look, this is this is election fraud. This is election fraud." I think maybe at least in that case, people were mashing the crap out of that button, like, "I'm gonna vote the shit out of this button," because they were so pissed off at what's going on in America. But see, that is what a revolution is: is voting, not you know, beating people up just because you don't like them, because that is what intolerance is. Intolerance is being intolerant, and the people who claim that uh, they fight intolerance and hatred love Trump's hate. Well, beating the shit out of people is not love, and that is not tolerant. Uh, think about it. Uh, I know I'm 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 preaching to the choir because I'm sure that everybody, all my subscribers are are uh, neat people, and I'd like to meet a lot of you guys. I've met some people, but. Um, it, yeah, this is just stupid, okay? So, okay. I'll come right out and say it. Look at me. Okay, I voted for... Okay, I'm, this is my, uh, my my early voting ballot, all right? This is my overseas ballot, and I don't really get to vote for very much because I don't live in Arizona anymore, but I was able to vote for Trump, okay? And um, the United States Senator, there's that, uh, that dick brain John McCain who is about ready to keel over at any moment. I did not vote for him, and I wasn't going to vote for a Democrat, so out of protest, I voted for the Green Party pinhead. What's his name? Gary Swing. Whatever. It was a throwaway vote, but I'm not going to vote for McCain. He sucks. Um, you know, I voted for him, like, in 08. You know, for the past couple of elections, there was the Obama and not Obama. And I voted, even though I hated him, you know. And Obama was, he seemed really cool at first, and I was about ready to vote for him. He's like, oh, wow, he's against NAFTA. That's good. You know, uh, he's, he's uh, speaking out against uh, GMOs. He, well, at least he mentioned a little bit about that. Well, that's good. He, he talked about uh, wanting to um, put an end to uh, uh, job outsourcing. Wow, 
you know, I was thinking it would take a Democrat to do something like that, and I was willing to maybe vote for him because I knew Republicans were too stupid and a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, corporate goons that they wouldn't go along with something like that. There, there's this this mantra like, oh, you need to leave the corporations alone, and they're gonna, they're always gonna have the best uh, interest in their, you know, in the, the, everybody's best interest in their, uh, in mind. And of course, that also, you know, means, you know, dumping orange goo into the rivers of South America, you know, Alcoa with their aluminum plants and um, Enron and and uh, all, all these different scandals and such. And yeah, I, I I'm not okay. I, I I was raised Republican, but I've really gotten sick of the Republican Party. Okay, so don't don't ever accuse me of like, oh, you're just a Republican. All right, now, uh, U U.S. Rep in Congress. All right, it's uh, da, 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 da. okay. This this guy Trent Franks or uh, the Green Party. I, I'm like, why? Okay, there's no Libertarians to vote for, so I'm stuck with either Trent Franks, who I've gotten these automatic responses saying, "I believe that the TPP will benefit Arizona." Well, it's not you, stupid. The the TPP is not about uh, trade. It's all about. Uh, destroying the sovereignty of nations and exposing countries and and their citizens to the whims of corporate crony lawyers that's all it's about so um i voted for the the green party person just out of spite because i wasn't going to vote for uh uh trent franks you know whatever he's kind of a nice guy i suppose but you know whatever so the thing is is that you know, people say, oh, I wouldn't vote for Trump because he's a Republican. And I would tell people he's not a Republican. That's the thing. That's the reason why he's so popular, okay? He ran against both the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. Not only that, but he ran against Hollywood, the corrupt mainstream media that was unethically colluding with the DNC. He ran against the Washington establishment, the global elite ruling class, Wall Street, mentally deranged social agitators paid by the Clinton campaign to assault his his uh, his uh, rally attendees. That's illegal, by the way, and WikiLeaks exposed that. Uh, he ran against the sickening political correct thought police, rampant voter fraud. He ran against all of this, and he, dis despite all of odds, he won. And now I'm... Oh, God... Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm so glad I don't live in America right now. With all of these these stupid idiots taking to the streets, apparently none of them had even bothered reading the WikiLeaks because then they would have seen what uh, Hillary actually thought about them. He was, you know, she called them a bunch of basement dwelling uh, baristas and such, and you know, mocking um, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders people. Who, you know, I guess most of them went to at least the the, the young idiots, I guess. Um, they they switched to Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, I, I, I liked Bernie. Uh, when when I first learned about TPP, his name came up that he was speaking out against TPP. I'm like, wow, I like that. He was against Monsanto and GMOs. Okay, I like that too. But the, the more I found out about him, I'm like, uh, no, but, you know, gosh, it, it sure would be nice if uh, a Republican for a change would oppose TPP, but... <laughs> it's not going to happen. And then I found out about Trump, and I'm like, wow, this guy is, you know, on top of things. He's actually, he actually cares about people, and, you know, people before profits. And that's what these, these, uh, these goons that are taking to the streets don't realize. You know, it's, you, you see these, 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 these massive crowds, and it's like, why didn't I see these people at the, the Hillary speech events? I mean, she had, like, Trump was filling up, like, tens of thousands of people in, like, you know, stadiums. And, you know, Hillary could barely fill up half of a, a, a high school gymnasium, you know. And she had to try to hijack, like, um, uh, uh, parades and stuff. Or she had to have, like, freaking, you know, Jay-Z and, uh, what's her name, Beyonce come and give free tickets and such. So, yeah. So... These people, they're listening to their, their rhetoric, you know, they think that, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're going to, like, build these Nazi gas chambers, and, you know, if, if your skin isn't white, then you're going to be, 
um, you know, executed and, and stuff. It's like, there's like, they're completely divorced from reality. You know, they haven't even, they, these, these crybaby pinheads obviously have not even bothered listening to any of Trump's speeches. So the, the prevailing narrative is that a man, oh, he has blonde hair, kill him, kill him, he has blonde hair, he's a racist because everybody who is white, they're racist, right? Um, a, a man who is married to a beautiful immigrant who was born in communist Yugoslavia, who's fluent in five languages and immigrated to America, he's married to an immigrant, but yet he's somehow anti-immigrant. And we're also to believe that uh, this man who spoke directly to minorities and his desire to help them by raising their status and giving them employment rather than government dependence. Somehow he's racist. You know, the, the, the other side, they're always like, hey, thanks for the vote, assholes. I'll see you in four years. Sayonara. You know, even Al Sharpton has been complaining about this. You know, that the Democrat Party um, just treats them like crap. But in reality, I mean, they've always treated them like crap ever since, um, you know, going back like 150 years or so ago to, um, uh, what was his name? Shoot, I can't remember his name. The, the president, uh, he owned slaves and he was, he was a really brutal asshole. Oh, yeah. So, although I don't think that Canada will need to build a wall to keep these temper tantrum throwing regressive leftists out of their country... Um, I, I can speak from experience. It takes a lot of guts to immigrate to a foreign country. Okay. I am an immigrant myself. I legally immigrated to Japan nearly five years ago. Legally. Legally. Okay. These people don't understand the difference between a legal immigrant and an illegal immigrant. There's like just these obvious, simple facts that any child can understand. Okay. Like... Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. You know? It's just, they don't, these people are, they are the reason why Trump was elected, because people are so sick of this crap, okay? So, yeah, I am a legal immigrant. If I had moved to Japan illegally, you know, like, I, I when I came here, I had a three-month visa, okay? A tourist visa. I could only stay here for 90 days. And if I didn't get my spousal visa in order during that time, and I would not have been able to, to uh, you know, find a, a, a regular job, etc. Okay? So, I moved all my stuff here legally, but when I moved here, I had to have a, a, a two-way ticket, I mean, I, a round-trip ticket, because I did not have uh, a visa when I first came here. So, moved here, applied for a spousal visa, you know, and then I, I, got, I got the job. Okay? So, legally... Okay, that also means that if I was to try to vote in the elections here, I would be turned away because I'm not a citizen. And that's the way it should be. Duh. And he, uh, apparently, um, you know, the uh, President Obama, who is my president, he's always been my president, okay? I'm not going to he's not my president. Well, he is, okay? I'm sorry. So, anyway, uh... I moved to Japan because I love this country and I love its culture. And I would like to be a part of it. That's why I came here. Okay, I moved here to contribute to Japan, not to leech off of it. If I break its laws, I could possibly get deported. Okay, People, uh, if they are cut with um, um, doing drugs, for example, they are deported and they can't come back. If People overstay their visas, they get deported, and they can't come back, okay? Um, Mexico, if you do that, you, you get deported, and you can't come back, all right? America is just a bunch of wussies, you know, <laughs> to, 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 to be kind of a, to, to make it mild. Um, yeah, and it's about time that... Uh, you know, America got stronger about that kind of stuff because people are abusing the system, okay? So, I came to Japan, okay? Um, yeah, yeah, like, for example, like, uh, Paul McCartney. He was caught at the airport, you know, smuggling drugs into Japan. And it's only been, this is like back in the 80s, I believe, and it's only been recently, just this past year, that he's been allowed to come back to Japan. And they, they made a big deal about it in the news, okay? He, had, he was not able to come back here for quite a long time. 
Okay, so um, I'm here because I love Japan and I've been interested in Japan since I was in like junior high and I began st studying World War II and later in high school I, I fell in love with Japanese history. This, these are hobbies of mine, okay? So, yeah, I came here because I love Japan. I did not come here to break the country's rules nor to force my culture onto it. You know, as, as, a, as an English teacher, of course, I am encouraged to share American culture. Um, I don't really want to share, you know, the, the social justice warrior crap and all, all of the bad things about America, but I try to focus on the positive things about America. Okay? So, if I did not respect this country, I would not have come here. There are plenty of countries I do not respect, and I, that's why I don't live there. Okay? It's that simple. So, I, I often, I encounter foreigners who do nothing but complain about Japan, and I just want to ask them, why are you even here? Why don't you just go home? If you think it's so terrible, pack up and leave. Go. See if I care. I don't care. All right? It's that simple. So, all right. So, obviously, I am a horrible person for thinking these things. All right? Now, last weekend, I, I had a get-together with some friends. Uh, I, I got X-Men Apocalypse on Blu-ray. And uh, I don't have a Blu-ray player, so I went over to my friend's place. Okay, and uh, we were doing a, a drinking game. So there was a uh, the people involved was my friend. Uh, he's from England. I had a friend from America, and a friend from Spain. Okay, so we had this uh, drinking game. Every time they said the word mutant, we would have to pause the movie, and we did shots of this uh, honey flavored whiskey. It was really good. It was really really good. Um, so, uh, but we we started talking about stuff about the election and such, and um, I said, you know that. The, the guy from England was like, please, Greg, please, don't vote for Trump. I'm like, too late. I already did. And he got so pissed off at me. He's like, Greg, how could you do such a thing? You're not a racist. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's because Trump isn't a racist, okay? It's just, uh, like, what? He was even honored by Jesse Jackson for focusing on minorities, uh, he fought in the 80s, he fought discrimination on golf courses to be, you know, to make them more inclusive and such, because there was a lot of crap going on. Uh, you, you don't really get accused of being a racist until you vote, you know, that you run on a Republican ticket somehow. It's just, it's, that's the way it's become. Now, I want to talk a little bit about multiculturalism, because that is big in the news, and I, it, it is uh, denigrated. And it is also um, overly uh, promoted as well. Both are dangerous. And, and speaking from my experience, okay, I, on a personal level, I think multiculturalism is great. Okay, I'm married to a, a Japanese girl. We have a bilingual child. It's something beautiful. Okay, um, my uncle is married to a, a lady from Thailand. Okay, my, my uncle back in, uh, in America. Um, so, multiculturalism can be really cool. Now, when it comes to um, forced multiculturalism, that's not good. Okay, now, I, I, okay, multiculturalism is nice, but like, for example, people here in Japan, there's this, this over-fascination with what they call hafu. And I always tell people, you know, you don't say half. You can say half American or half Japanese or half, you know, whatever. Um, but if you just call somebody half, then uh, to an English, a native English speaker, that is rude. But they don't really intend it to be that way. Um, but there's, there's this whole thing about hafu. is like this, this, uh, this epitome of beauty. And I get so many people who... Um, they always mention about how, how beautiful and like all half Japanese kids are so beautiful and stuff. Well, I've seen some kids that are not, you know, I'm sorry, but not all of them are that beautiful. Um, most tend to be, but, um, that should not be preferred to, uh, uh, you know, a child that is, is pure Japanese. Both are okay. And to demand that people believe otherwise is stupid you know racial purity is good multi ethnicity is 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 beautiful it's all good we don't have to be made ashamed of our our uh, ethnicities but that's that is what this the divisive crap is going on 
especially in America, and I hate it. Um, here in Japan, I, I like it. I, 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 you know, of course, everybody, you know, fawns over my daughter, but I don't want them to think that um, that is, you know, what has to happen. I'm always telling my daughter, look, you will have people who in immediately love you for who you are, and you will have people who automatically hate you for the same reason. Because a lot of kids will get jealous because of the attention that, that people will, you know, people will tend to gradu uh, gravitate around her. And, you know, that's, I, I don't want that bias. You know, bias can be positive or negative, but it's still bias. So what we're seeing, though, is forced multiculturalism, especially in Europe. Okay, now... I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson here, okay? When, uh, when, when Theodosius the Great allowed the Visigoths to settle within the Roman Empire in 382, he made a huge mistake that took years to incubate. He felt that the barbarian Visigoths could be contained and neutralized through a policy of coexistence because he felt that he could exploit them for labor and to use them as soldiers. However, they slowly seized pieces of the empire and eventually they sacked Rome in the year 410. Eventually the Western Empire collapsed in 416. What does that sound like today? That's exactly what's going on in Europe, okay? Now this is what is called globalism and this is what is dangerous to this world. You know, they, they and this is why people say are saying that Trump is so racist or so xenophobic. His wife is a foreign immigrant, and yet they call him xenophobic. You know, you can't call me xenophobic. Look, there's Japan, okay? Well, it's nighttime, but I can point my camera, and you can see the snow-capped Mount Fuji out my window here. All right, I am about as multicultural as, as, or probably more so, than a lot of these whiny pussies. Sorry to say it. But uh, I'm gonna go to Canada. I'm gonna... Well, you're not. Okay, you don't. You don't have the balls to do it. Most of them are a bunch of. Mm, they're all talk. They don't have what it takes to get up, and th it takes a lot of courage. You know, I, 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 I did not come here to mooch off of the system here. Now I do have permanent residence, but I don't take it for granted. Okay. Now what's going on in Europe is it's alarming. It's frightening. And people are afraid, you know, not not people, but, you know, they're, they're being made afraid because of their governments. That, oh, well, you know, if, if you say that, uh, you know, a North African Muslim raped you, then that makes you a racist. No, it makes them the racist, you know. It, uh, stupid, okay. Anybody with a brain does not want that to happen in America as well, okay. Now... For example, if I was a Muslim in America who was committed to upholding the Constitution and rejecting Sharia law and believing that all people are made equal, which is in contrary to Islam, but, you know, whatever, I'll just put that aside. You know, if I was such a person uh, that I, I was a Muslim and I wanted people to appreciate my religion, then I would not want these barbarians coming and, and ruining it for me. Because, you know... In the same way here, me speaking as an American living in Japan, I don't want a bunch of belligerent Americans coming to Japan and causing problems for me. That's why I stay away from places like uh, Okinawa. You know, I feel kind of guilty going there because just recently there was yet another rape. You know, back in like in the 90s, there was like, there there was that, that gang rape. There was that uh, that one kid that was hit by a by a, a, a jeep. And the, the, the military person ran into the base and wouldn't come out, and they were demanding that they stand trial to, in Japanese courts and stuff. So These people, they come here, uh, not all military, obviously, but so many, they come here, they act, they act like chimpanzees, and it's terrible. And it, whether it's, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's not fair to judge me that way, but it happens, okay? It happens. So that's why I don't want people, troublemakers, to come to Japan from, you know, that represent my country, I don't want that to happen. Stereotypes, for good or worse, exist, okay? Now, a lot of stereotypes exist for a reason. Um, they're justified, some aren't, but they are a fact of life, okay? So, to want to prevent people from coming here, it doesn't make you xenophobic. 
and you know wanting to help improve their country so they don't have to go so they can stay where they're uh, where, where, where they are are more acclimated that's what's best for them too you know it's it's ridiculous and you know with uh, with this election I know there are so many people across Europe who have been looking to this election for inspiration that they are hoping to liberate their own countries from the corrupt globalist people who are being you know, who are running their, their countries uh, these these people are desperate to reclaim their their countries from these these violent migrants these people are not getting a job they're not contributing to the society all that they are contributing to is just you know fear and death and and it's uh, it's getting way out of hand people in Brexit I, th I think that's well I think it's pretty obvious that uh, this the Brexit thing people were really inspired by Donald Trump as well people are sick of having multiculturalism uh, harmful again I like multiculturalism but this is harmful multiculturalism that is 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 hurting all these people I know there's a guy in Russia who is happy about the election results um, you know the Russians were, were uh, being demonized like crazy during this this uh, uh, election from from Hillary and it was ridiculous nobody believes her about the stupid hacking crap oh it's the Russians it's the Russians no it was actually the people working for you who blew the whistle these people are sick of you and just blaming Putin all the time it was just stupid I think most people saw that that was a bunch of crap no guy in Malaysia he said he's happy to, to see uh, Trump win because he said that his country he's got uh, they they have a prime minister of Malaysia who is neck deep in scandals and corruption and they can't get rid of him though because uh, the popular party keeps electing them electing this guy into power um, I have a friend in the Middle East and um, he's he, he's he's very pro Trump of course a lot of most of the Middle East uh, officially they're pro Hillary because they're you know they're Muslims they're they're terrorists and of course Hillary's going to be soft on them and uh, Hillary will allow uh, uh, terrorism to spread across North America and uh, but this this friend of mine said that you know the the people who really should be refugees the people who are rational minded um, the people who are uh, the the so-called kufar the, the the people who are apostates the people who are being killed for their beliefs. Um, their their reje their rejection of of the dominant religion, they were supporting Trump. They wanted Trump to win, um, and this friend of mine in the Middle East, it, when he sees these 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 rioters, he can only dream of having the freedom of speech. His country donates to the Clintons. This his his country had donated to Clinton's campaign. There is no way that he would have any freedom, any hope of freedom, with someone like Hillary as president but you know again it's not riot is it is criminal activity you know a demonstration is guaranteed by the Constitution but what it crosses into rioting that is definitely not good uh, I have a friend in Japan who he has a popular YouTube channel I guess I won't mention his name um, but yeah he's here in Japan he does uh, Japanese type stuff on his his channel he is from Europe and he sees the likes of Merkel and he's been really really upset with what's been going on in his home country people are scared the people in Syria the Christians in Syria who've been massacred thanks to Obama uh, they're happy they've been praying for Trump to become a president because Obama is you know this whole oh uh, ISIS or they're just the uh, the junior varsity team. Of course he's going easy on them. I mean he's it's it's it, it's already come out that 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 uh, these countries um, that fund the the Clinton Foundation are the same countries that uh, that fund ISIS. It's it's there. It's in WikiLeaks. Take a look. Okay. It's stupid. So. And of course, again, every election the KKK is always brought up. Okay, now let's look at history. All right, let's not forget that the KKK was formed by the Democrat Party, and 
was used as the Democrat Party's terrorist army to assert, uh, to assert political power. The Democrat Party dropped the KKK in the 60s when it changed its tune, apparently. Now, look up um, President Johnson and what he said about uh, uppity N-words, his comment, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, now, does the Democrat Party have a terrorist army of thugs? that commits acts of violence and, and murder people and put to push its political agenda? Yes, it's called the Black Lives Matter. And there's a lot of people who resent it, and there's a lot of black people who resent it as well, because they are being hurt by these, by these thugs. Okay? So, of course, Trump rejects this, and somehow that makes him a racist bigot. Uh, people are just sick to death of the race card. Now, he has he's spoken about the rigged two-party system, the erosion of the middle class, the political corruption, and the need to favor citizens over outsiders. He's loved because he isn't afraid of saying what everyone is thinking. His speeches attract tens of thousands. This whole thing about uh, uh, Hillary getting the popular vote, well, yeah, with voter fraud, of course it's going to look like that. It's a bunch of bull crap. It's, it's that, there's no way, I mean, just looking at, at, uh, um, the engagement in social media, um, facepalm, Twitter, Twitter, um, all of the, the YouTube views about Trump stuff, uh, the, the speeches and such, people are, are focused on him, okay? And Hillary, she, she was begging for people, you know? She even had freaking Lady Gaga dressed up as a Nazi uniform and telling us how, how to vote for her. It's just, it's stupid. I, we're sick of Hollywood people telling us how to vote. This is this whole thing about Mark Hamill, going back to this whole Star Wars thing. I'm sick to death of it. I'm really sick of it. So, you, if you look at the demographics, if this was even on uh, the New York Times, uh, Trump wasn't elected because of racist white people it was because of minorities and Democrats who, struck, who switched sides. There's a lot of Democrats, they, they were pissed off at what happened because Hillary stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Bernie was a nice old man. Um, kind, he's kind of kooky or whatever, but I respect him. And he knew that, that uh, she was no good, but obviously he had a price, and that price was paid, and now he's got a mansion or something somewhere, and then he endorsed Hillary, and you don't even hear about him anymore. A lot of his followers were really pissed off, and these people don't want TPP to happen, so they switch sides. It's that easy. There's no so-called white lash, as Mr. Uh, Van Van Jones, Mr. Afraid of Breakfast, says. Stupid as hell. It's this this race baiting is stupid, stupid, stupid. So um, yeah, going back to that party, my American friend actually he was asleep, and actually he's an African American, and I'm glad he was asleep because. Um, you know, he, he drank too much or whatever, but uh, he's really, he's sick of the whole race card as well. He's sick of the race baiting himself. Um, I'm glad that he wasn't there to see that, But because I, I was getting bang, ganged up on by the guy from England and the guy from Spain. And uh, they're just tearing into me. Well, how could you vote for him? And when I started to explain, and then, no, 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 no. And these people, these two guys were completely ill informed and they didn't know anything about anything I was trying to talk about it's stupid so that was number two it's actually you know Star Wars related but it's it's about the election so yeah people ask me hey Greg you live in Japan you live in Japan why why should you care about politics well what happens to America affects everybody and that's the reason why this really does interest me. And this leads into number three. The big thing that has happened is that TPP is down the toilet like TP toilet paper. No, I'm sorry, that's not a good joke. Uh, actually, I had this idea of uh, um, I, I was coming up with this song. The, the TPP took my freedoms from me. They took them away. Away from me. You know the Romans. I like the Romans. Um, I couldn't think of anything else, but that was that was the chorus, and I didn't get any further than that. But I don't have to sing that though, because TPP, <laughs> goodbye, it's gone. 
that was the big news. I saw it on Breitbart, and they linked to the, the Wall Street Journal. Um, they're covering it in Japan. Prime Minister Abe is crying his little tears, like, Oh, God, I wanted to ruin my country. Boo-hoo, sniff. It's gone. TPP is gone. I have been griping about TPP for the longest time. Now, TPP is uh, government crap that we didn't vote for in America or in Japan. People did not vote for it, and they're being forced on it. Now, protest that. Protest when the government shits on you. Good. Protest that, okay? Protest it when some uh, some crony corporate co uh, corporation shits on people. Protest the crap out of that. They need to know. Monsanto, you know, all this, this GMO crap, people need to put an end to that because they've got all their money in Washington. And, you know, when Obama was, was denouncing lobbyists, I knew he was full of crap. I mean, it sounded good at first, but I knew he's, he filled his cabinet with nothing but lobbyists, okay? Here comes President Trump, who's, oh, he, if, if he keeps his word, he's going to be president without even, he's not even asking for the presidential salary. He doesn't even want to get paid. So nobody can pay him off. That's the reason why people are so scared shitless about this guy is that uh, he has integrity. He did. He's not in it for the money. He's in it to, sorry to use the phrase, but to make America great again. Obama hasn't. Um, you know, t t Bush didn't do it. Um, you know, living in Japan, I've, I've come to realize that um, there's a whole, the, you know, the right and the left, and both of them have been destroying America. You got uh, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, and if we get another Clinton, we're finished. There's no way. People have been suffering. Like, I, I came to Japan to get a job because it was just nothing but contract work. And it's really hard to get a job. And, you know, if, you're like, oh, I'm gonna, if I don't get who I want to vote for, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to flee to another country. Well, that's kind of what I did. So, you know, I did it. These whiny people you see on YouTube, they're not going to do it. Especially they're not going to go to Mexico. Oh, heaven forbid. Oh, yeah, I thought you were racist, you know. Or I, I thought Mexico was such a great country, you know. Multiculturalism, why don't you go there? Bunch of dingbats. Because all the Mexicans are trying to come to America. Um, what was I saying? So, yeah, TPP. Goodbye, TPP. Um, protest that. Protest co corporations. You know, protest government. Pro protest go uh, uh, corporations. But you don't protest a, demo a democratic election. You know, that's just throwing a temper tantrum. What, you're you're protesting the fact that your person didn't get elected. You know, with, despite all of the voter fraud stacked against Trump, he actually won. And it would have been an even bigger win because people are so pissed off at what's going on in America. So I don't want to hear it. You know, these, these, these people, they're stupid. They're whining. You know, they're, they're hurting people. It should not be tolerated. It's ridiculous. So, um, this has been a really long rant. So, yeah. And I didn't even get into the whole, this Podesta pizza thing and the, the child sex trafficking. Look it up. Um, I'll put some links in the description. The evil, the amount of evil going on in Washington, it's scary. WikiLeaks has just begun. It's just, you only, you're only, when you read the stuff, it doesn't even make sense. But people are putting the clues together, and it's scary. And it might go all the way up to the top. And we don't know how long this has been going on, but children are being abducted. Who knows if they're being murdered. Um, this is frightening. And to pursue justice is going to possibly destroy the American government. I don't know, but it's really scary. Um... It seems like some goofy conspiracy when they're talking about cheese pizza and stuff, but these are code words, and uh, the New York Police Department found it on the the laptop of uh, Mr. Weiner, who is married to, or the, you know, the estranged husband of uh, Uma Abedin, who is just like one step away from uh, from terrorist ties. Um, she has him. You know, Anonymous has uh, blown the lid on that. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, Anonymous, WikiLeaks, um, Project Veritas, um, of course, InfoWars, people, 
the, the internet is exposing the evil in this world, and this is a really good thing, because before the internet came along, uh, you were just fed whatever was in the news, and this election has shown how incredibly corrupt the news is, and how they've been uh, violating law to, to try to assist Hillary, and uh, she had it, she thought that, that she had it nailed, and she didn't get it, and that's why she threw a temper tantrum. She wouldn't, like, all her, her zombies were uh, waiting in tears for her to make her a concession speech. She didn't even show up. Didn't even show up. She was probably, like, you know, writhing on the floor, puking green ectoplasm or something at that point. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah. She's, uh, hopefully she's out of the picture. This is a big, big week. Now, before I end this video, I want to point out a few things that you can find in WikiLeaks, assuming you do not know this already. Uh, this is the WikiLeaks homepage. This is here in the Hillary Clinton email archive. Um, this email is from Cheryl Mills, and uh, she's an upstanding uh, person whose name was mentioned a lot during the Benghazi trials. Uh, this is called Honduras, maybe, maybe. It seems like it's pretty boring. I don't, I don't like see anything big deal about this, but at the very end of this email, it says here, I've highlighted it in yellow, with fingers crossed, the old rabbit's foot out of the box in the attic, I will be sacrificing a chicken in the backyard to Moloch. That doesn't really seem like it's something that would come up in conversation. You know, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm sacrificing, uh... Uh, animals to Moloch in my backyard. Um, yeah, so what is Moloch? Oh, it's this uh, lovely guy here. This is actually, um, it says right here in Wikipedia, uh, it is the biblical name of the Canaanite god associated with child sacrifice. Hmm, child sacrifice, killing children? Oh, okay. Hey, speaking of children, now let's look in the WikiLeaks here. This is from the, in the Podesta emails. Uh, this is uh, regarding Farmer's L update, and welcome, Matt. Um, this is about, uh, you know, we're going to have a heated pool, and uh, so a swim is, par is a possibility. And this is uh, two, a whole bunch of these different people, um, you know, p the Podestas. And here in yellow, it says, Bonnie will be Uber service to transport Ruby Emerson and Maeve Luzato, 11, 9, and almost 7. So you'll have some further entertainment. And they will be in that pool for sure. Okay. Now this is from Tamara Luzato. So apparently she is um, offering her ch her three children, I guess, I assume. Um, 11, 9, and 7 years old. To entertain adults in a pool. I would never suggest that my daughter is meant to be an entertainment to anybody. Um, you know, this alone, this isn't really, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's not a whole lot to go by, but it is kind of weird. And um, it, it is rather bizarre that this comes up, but trust me, the rabbit hole goes deeper and deeper. And you, you, maybe you can uh, check out the links in the bottom of this video to learn more. One thing I forgot to show you. So in honor, in honor of Trump's inauguration, my daughter drew this picture. This is Peppy the Frog. Isn't that beautiful? She drew this for me. And also, because I asked her to, this is... Vampire Santa Claus, Pepe. Just because. Look at the... He's been doing some uh, spirit cooking. You can see the blood on the wall. Isn't that great? <laughs> I hear a mountain lion. I gotta get back to my house. You better get to your car. It was very nice meeting you.